Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's presentation. I want to um, give a, a few minutes for a, a few other people to try to get online tonight. We do have a lot to cover. Um, again, this is our every few weeks. We uh, on Thursday evenings we have what we call live chats, where we bring in a local experts in the area, whether it be property management, mortgages. Um, defense issues, legal issues, you name it. Anything that we find of value, we go ahead and uh, schedule and try to get you uh, the latest information that we feel will be relevant uh, to a lot of you out there, a lot of homeowners out there trying to navigate their way through these uh, difficult times. And then on top of that, uh, we, all, we also answer your questions live, which is an extra, obviously an extra added value. But um, with tonight, I just want to lay out the ground rules like we do at the very beginning here. Um, as an itinerary, we do a five-minute introduction of who we are, Hope for Homers Consulting. And then we introduce our presenter for the evening. Uh, tonight is Robert Selvin with American Mortgage Services. And he'll, I'll be introducing him in just a little bit. He will have 15 minutes to cover uh, his information that he wants to cover. And then we will open up the last 10 minutes of the uh, presentation to entertain questions. Now, how you ask a question throughout the process can be done in one of uh, really three ways. First and foremost, we prefer you have the chat function. If you are online, you'll be able to do this. There's a chat function where you can type in your questions during the presentation as you think of them. We will I'll answer those in order as they go along. And then we'll, if we get through all those, then we'll default to opening up the, um, the phones because people are attending by phone and by uh, computer or both, actually. And then we also, um, if you want to email in questions, we have that available, too. Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's get on with uh, the presentation here. Uh, again, my name is Chris Summer. I'm the Managing Director of Hope for Homers Consulting. Uh, what we are, we are an attorney back attorney consulting firm uh, with basically expertise on the best resolve distressed property slash foreclosure property cases for our clients. In essence, we handle all aspects of the settlement process minus the legal advice from beginning to resolution and thereafter. Our goal is to help our clients get out of their problems and help them reestablish their lives. In essence, you can say we what what our basic motto is we try to we help clients stay in their homes if possible but if that's not possible we help them get out of their homes without being financially devastated and that's a very important and probably equally as important as trying to stay in your home is, is that issue there all we ask for from our clients that we work with is prompt prompt, prompt response to our paperwork request and basically tell us yes or no to the settlement offers we bring to them uh, so, in layman's terms, if you work with us, there's no more sending in docs, negotiating with your lender on your own, and trying to navigate the very complicated waters of the settlement process with your lenders. At Hope for Homeowners Consulting, we take care of that for you. In a nutshell, our standard operating process is to, I guess, in a three-step format. Uh, it, it's a very complicated par process, but we try to narrow it down to three basic steps. One is assess your financials, two, create a personalized plan for you called a written action plan, and then three, if you decide to work with us, uh, we lead you to settlement. And our typical time frame for settlement is around six to eight months, typically. Uh, and these plans that I mentioned, uh, the written action plan, each plan is personalized to that client's specific needs and resources, and then sometimes in cases with multiple properties, Strategies will differ with each property. We try to take an honest, candid, upfront assessment and individualized approach with each property, with each and every client. We tried and we do not have an agenda with our clients. Uh, in essence, to finish up, I would say we take the stress and hassle and confusion out of the process and let our clients go back to leading a normal life. Uh, and with that being said, Again, the name of our company is Hope for Homers Consulting. Uh, I'm, the, again, Chris Summer, the managing director, uh, the, uh, the attorney um, on, on file, which you can see on us here. It's in the About Us section. 
is Matt Mitchum. He's the uh, the owner of the company. But th that's where it is on online. That being said, I want to move on to the next portion. Obviously, the most important part of this is our, our, our guest speaker tonight. His name is uh, Robert Sullivan. I'm going to go ahead and take the liberty to pull up his information. He, uh, Rob uh, has taken the, uh, the opportunity to put together a nice professional slideshow presentation, which uh, I think you guys will find uh, very helpful uh, to follow along with and to, um, and to kind of understand where he's coming from and the issues that he's covering. Uh, one last thing I'll say for, for Mr. Sullivan is that um, I've known him for over 10 years now. And in essence, anyone who's in, still in the mortgage broker industry has to know what they're doing. And, um, and I'll say from my personal experiences with Rob, he's one of the most uh, experienced, knowledgeable, uh, trustworthy um, mortgage brokers out there uh, that, you, that you can deal with. So if you have a situation that's possible, I'll tell you up front and he'll go through all the pitfalls that you'll, you know, those kind of questions you'll never know to ask. He'll go over that with you up front on his own accord. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass over the microphone to uh, Rob Sullivan, again with American Mortgage Services. Thanks, Rob. Happy Thursday, everyone. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate the, uh, the kind words there. Um, like Chris said, I work for American Mortgage Services. Uh, it's a brokerage firm out of uh, South Tampa. Uh, I lend in uh, anywhere in, in Florida. Uh, I got my uh, contact information up here, phone number and email address, in case you guys want to uh, uh, send a question to me. And uh, without further ado, we'll start my uh, presentation here. I'm going to go over um, current mortgage guidelines and advice on what to do with your house. Uh, I think the reason Chris brought me in is because the last couple of years, the mortgage industry has really taken a hit. And a lot of the guidelines changed, so uh, a lot of this stuff you might not know. So, so we're going to start here with the guidelines, and I've got to figure out how to get to the next screen. So, give me a sec. Okay. okay. All right. We're going to start with the loan programs. The uh, loan programs that are out there, there's a number of them, but there's four main ones that about 99% of all mortgages are going to encompass. And um, they are FHA, conventional, VA, and USDA. Uh, there, are other, there are other programs out there, but these are the ones that you're going to need to know about. So I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to give a highlight of each one of these programs for you. We're going to start with the uh, FHA and uh, go through the uh, just some parameters about the program so you have a good understanding of what you're going to need. Uh, your minimum credit score for an FHA loan is a 620. Now that's your middle score. Uh, when lenders pull your credit, they're going to pull all three bureaus and they're going to take the middle score of those scores to, uh, to underwrite your loan. Uh, the maximum loan to value for an FHA loan is 96.5% for a purchase, 97.75% for a rate and term refinance, and 85% for a cash out refinance. Now for your income, uh, lenders are going to require you to provide 30 days worth of pay stubs and your last two years W-2s to verify your income. Uh, for self-employed borrowers, they're going to ask for um, two years of full tax returns to qualify your income. Now credit, uh, additionally to having a middle score of a 620 or higher, you're also going to have to have three established trade lines that have 12 months worth of payment history. So a trade line can be a car loan, it can be a department store credit card, regular credit card, student loans, anything that shows up on your credit that is showing as a, a monthly payment. For your assets, um, your assets are going to be verified with 60 days worth of statements from whatever financial institution you have that money with. Um, lenders don't really care about your personal property assets, your cars, or anything like that. All they're going to be looking at is your liquid assets. So your checking account, your savings account, your 401k, any kind of uh, bonds or mutual funds that you have, that's what they're going to be looking at. Uh, your job history, uh, you're going to have to provide a minimum of two-year job history on your application. There are some uh, exceptions to that, and the main one is if you're a student and you're just graduating from college, and you've only been in the work, uh, the industry for, for a year or for a couple months, that can be an exception. 
Now we're going to move on to conventional loans. And some of this stuff is redundant, so I'm not going to go over all of it for each one of these programs. I'm just going to go over the differences. Uh, minimum credit score on the conventional is also a 620, but that's for a loan to value of 80% or less. Now, if you want to go over 80%, you're going to need a credit score of a 720. Uh, your maximum loan to value on a conventional loan is 95% for a purchase, 95% for a rate and term refinance, and 85% for a cash out. Your income is the same, your credit's the same, assets are verified the same, but the difference with the assets here is the borrower must have at least 5% of their own money on a purchase to bring to the table. With the FHA, you can actually have that, uh, the down payment can be a gift from a blood relative. So conventional is a little more difficult. You've got to have a little bit more of your own money to be able to, to qualify. Job history is the same. Now we're going to move on to VA loans. VA loans an excellent product, but you have to have uh, worked in the military or currently be working in the military to, uh, to qualify. Uh, minimum credit score for this is a 620 as well. Uh, your maximum loan to value is 100% for a purchase, 100% for a rate and term refinance, and 90% for a cash out refinance. So this product allows you to purchase a house with possibly no money down at all if you get uh, if your contract is written where the seller pays your closing costs, you could actually buy a house with nothing. Uh, your income is going to be the same, uh, your credit's the same, and your assets are the same. So is the job history. Uh, assets for VA is the same as FHA. You can actually have a gift from a relative for the uh, for the down payment if you're making one, or for the closing cost if you have to pay them. And uh, the last program we're going to go over here is USDA, another excellent program. Um, the middle credit score here is the same, 620, uh, but there are additional requirements with USDA. You have to have, the property has to be located in a USDA eligible area. Um, so you can't just buy any house. It's got to, it's got to be, it's not really a rural area per se, but it can't be in a city or an urban area. So, and the way you find out is if you just Google USDA eligibility, and uh, the website for the USDA will come up. You just click on it, and uh, you can actually type in the address of whatever property you're looking at, and it'll tell you whether it's in the eligible area. Uh, the maximum loan to value on this program is 100% for a purchase and 100% for a rate and term refinance. There's no cash out refinances for USDA loans. Your income is verified the same way, but your income must also meet USDA requirements. So if you make too much money, you're not going to qualify for this program. Uh, your credit is the same, assets are the same, and the, the job history is the same. On the assets, um, it can also be a gift uh, for the, the down payment or for the closing cost on the USDA loans as well. So that goes over the four programs that you're going to need to know about.